All right, so we're going outside to play baseball. Is that what we're doing? Out. Uh, oh, door sorry, hit me in the butt. The <laughs> yeah, we're going outside to play baseball. When's the last time you played catch with somebody? Uh, my son and I played, I'd say back in the late spring, early yep. summer. When's the last time you played adult catch with another man? <laughs> uh, I'd say church softball. How long ago was that? Probably last year. But that was part of a formal activity. Yeah. You didn't have a man say, hey, let's go play catch. I did not. No, so well, you just did. Me throwing the ball in my glove here. Okay. Throwing it to you. That's a good start. Let's move you away from that vehicle so I don't crunch it. Did you see that squirrel just drop that thing on me? Yeah. Oh, that was rude. Okay, here you go. Ball. Uh-huh. I got it. My goodness, dude. That's your third throw, and you're just in full velocity mode. That was Sorry. No, why are you apologizing? That was good pop. Real good pop. Dude, I'm old. We're going to do this for 30 minutes? <laughs> Only 30 minutes? Come on, man. What do you do right now, sports-wise? Do you go out and throw the ball around with people, play basketball? No. Nothing? I don't, man. Your circle I'm, uh, of friends doesn't do that? I don't know. I'm just in a weird place. I uh, I used to love playing ball, baseball. Like, loved it. But I'm just busy. And uh, I'm the backup guy for the church softball team. And so I do two things when I go. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm i the guy that just generally tries to get people excited. Like try to pump them up. Okay. I can see that. But uh, the, I usually play shortstop, third, or rover. Rover's a thing in church softball. What do you like playing best? Uh, Rover. Just because you're involved in everything? You're involved in everything, but pl plus you can uh, you can mess with people a little bit. Like you can play one position, and when the softball is pitched, you can run to another. And so in softball, you can try to hit it where you want to hit it. Because it's slow pitch softball, right? Yeah, it's slow pitch softball. Let's not get crazy. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you can kind of mess with people because you can place it if if you're a good enough hitter. And so when I know a guy's up to bat and he's going to place it, let's say dink it right over the second baseman. That's typically around where the rover is. I'll get in that position, and then when the pitch is thrown, I'll run to center field. Does it Just, work? Yeah, it totally works. Just so he can see movement in his eyes, and it gets a little confusing. But I only do that with the really good hitters because they overthink it. Uh-huh. I don't know. Is that stupid? No, it's not stupid at all. It makes a bunch of sense. Yeah. So I like to do that. Okay. Physics question. Yeah. I have a few of those while we're out here. Okay. In softball, sometimes you'll see those players who will almost swing down through the plane of contact. Like chopping it. Like yeah. chopping wood, yeah. Yeah, like chopping wood. Like a 45-degree angle. Yeah. And when that happens, if the ball goes in the air, it follows this odd kind of upward and then almost spin back toward the plate kind of behavior. Yeah. It has this weird glide to it. What is it about that spin being applied to the ball, that kind of goofy underspin. The backspin, yeah. That makes it levitate. It seems like it floats longer and hangs The Magnus up. effect. The what? The Magnus effect. I knew you'd know the name. So the Magnus effect, so if you think about this, throw me a curveball, one second. It would All be right. my great honor to throw you a curveball. Yeah, throw a curve. Okay, we're a little too close, but I think I can get a oh, little... Let me give you some more distance, one second. A little bit of spin on this. What's the dis distance between the pitcher and the catcher? 90 it is feet? 60 feet, 6 inch. Oh, Pitcher in the plate is 60 feet, 6 inches. Oh, wow. I missed that bad. Okay. But if you stretch out, it's less. And so from the rubber that your foot goes on to the plate, 60 is that, feet. Is that how you hold a curveball? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I got two fingers uh, on one of the horseshoe seams. Yeah. And I'm not loose. I don't know if I can get this to spin or not. It, we'll okay. see. Uh, here's just like a... This is like a 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock curveball. This would be a very hittable curveball, but it should break a little bit. Okay. A little bit of movement. Yeah. So I did the same thing. I just put a lot of spin on it. Yeah. I, I kind of... Yeah, you really... Basically, I'm spinning it over the top, but the way your hand releases it, it, it spins like at a 45-degree angle. Yeah. I tried to exaggerate the spin, and it didn't work there. It's really hard for me to catch over here because I'm backlit, or you're backlit because of the sun. I'm, I'm going to move... 90 degrees to the sun. Let's go uh, in this little spot over here. Then we're, yeah. neither of us get the sun. Okay, so Magnus effect. Yeah. 
I'll give you more of a breaking ball later on. Okay. So what I find is that if I try to throw a curveball before I'm loose, yeah. it looks like what you just did, where you get a little curve, but you have to do that. You're almost like you're flexing your muscle. You're flicking it, yeah. And that is not sustainable for joints and ligaments. That'll wreck you. Yeah. You played college baseball, didn't you? I did. I did not. Throw a knuckleball. Dude, that was pretty good. Good enough that I didn't see it coming. I dropped it. <laughs> nice toss. Oh, that was ugly and weird. Isn't it weird? The knuckleball went, they like rotated a, a weird way. I mean, so a knuckleball for the third chair, because they can't see us playing catch, is when you try to take all the spin off of a baseball. Yeah. Which does not feel natural, because the way the, t the pads of your fingers grab the seams of the ball, the motion of throwing just naturally creates that friction on release and it gives it a bunch of spin. So you are throwing a knuckleball with your actual knuckles, right? I am, yeah. So I, I kind of hold it with all my fingernails and I push away from my finger as I'm throwing. Interesting. Yeah. And for me, it's just my fingernails. I'm dug into the white part of the ball. Okay, that is weird looking. I think your knuckleball is better than mine because there's just a little bit of rotation and it's forward. It's weird. Yeah, sometimes I'll take my pinky finger and I'll hang it off the edge to try to stabilize that, but it, it doesn't it doesn't work as well. It's a good knuckleball. I mean, you're getting the spin off of it. Golly, you're so, you're dirt. You, you got a derpy kind of throw with that. That's great. That was pretty, that broke, that curved in. That was weird. I don't understand how knuckleballs break, but sometimes they do. God, I'm so uncomfortable with yours. That makes me really, really happy. It's yeah. meant to make you uncomfortable. You were so, talking about the Magnus effect before we moved and why that spin makes a ball float or move different. Yeah, so uh, the way it's been explained to me is where flow is high, pressure is low. Okay, and if you think about spinning a baseball, one side of the baseball is, if you imagine it rotating, like let's say you're just looking at a baseball from the side and it's, it's flying left to right. And let's say okay. it's rotating clockwise. Okay. The air moving across the skin of the baseball is going to go higher. It's, the velocity, the relative velocity is going to be higher on the advancing side, and it's going to be lower on the retreating side. So you have a dissymmetry of pressure there because of the drag or the aerodynamics. Any difference in pressure there at all will pull the ball in one direction. So yeah, yeah, that, well, that yeah, that didn't break very well. But no, it moved. I don't know what makes it, that moved. I don't know what makes it break more than other things, but I do know that one night in Lacey's Spring, Alabama, was the best curveball night of my life. And for some reason, I don't know if we were closer to the river and we got better pressure differential, I don't know what happened, but I knew I could make people jump out of the box when I was pitching, and then it would come in for a strike. Really? It only happened one time, maybe Mercury was in retrograde or something, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, it's pretty good. What about you? What do you mean? Best time ever throwing a breaking pitch? Yeah. I, I relied on it so much in high school and college and the knuckleball as well. Yeah, I, I just rarely threw a fastball or a straight pitch at all. Everything had movement on it. So I don't know if I can do it. Again, I'm not loose yet, but I had this breaking ball. Did that go the opposite that way? That went the other way, didn't it? How did you do that? Isn't that weird? Is that a slider? That is a screwball. How did you do that? Or a cut fastball, but I don't really throw a cut fastball. I throw a... How did you do that? I am closing like I'm throwing a football. That's not how you throw a football, though. Uh, well, it can't be. <laughs> so rather than rotating across my body and turning my hand forward toward my opposite throwing hip, yeah. I'm coming over my body and I am rotating my hand outward and coming back to my throwing hip. But you're having to do it violently. It doesn't hurt. It's a very... Uh, but it broke the wrong way, right? And the first time you yeah, see that... Yeah, it's a very that, effeminate motion with your hand there. But it's yeah, okay. That's hurtful. <laughs> Give it, do it again. Well, I missed that one. I don't like it. Yeah, one, that one slipped a little bit. I can't do it. I tried. Good snag. Thank you. Oh, I hate everything about that. Like from the what it looks like when I do it? As a, perspective? As a batter, I just don't like it which is why you should throw it all the time, <laughs> right? It's weird. My dad and I used to play burnout. You know what that is? Where you just throw 
real hard until yeah. the other person cries. Golly, I could barely catch that. Because my algorithm wants to, like it knows the parabola, it knows it's going from your right to my right, my right. but then my Kalman filter's all messed up. It makes me, when I look at my past data in my database, it makes <laughs> me come across this side. That's weird, I hate it. Have you ever had a shoulder injury? So there, you see that that little kind of flat slider? Yeah. That moves the same amount the other way, away from the hitter. Yeah. So if you throw that, oh, that's Whoop, a disaster. And we're gone. You're never getting that back. It's gone. <laughs> I think it's in a lake. No, it's in the gum tree. Mistakes made. I got it. What I was trying to show you before I threw that ball to eternity. Yeah. Is that's how I compensated for not throwing a super hot fastball. Yeah. Just move it this way, move it this way, mix it up with a knuckleball. And I wonder what, the, uh, this sounds dumb to not take us out of the moment, but I wonder what this sounds like, because as I'm throwing, you can probably hear me throwing when I- The exertion, grapple. you mean? Say that again? The exertion, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Especially if we make an asymmetry of the audio file here. Right. There's that, but then I think there's the other thing where uh, got a little grunt going on. That's interesting. So obviously throwing a baseball just means something. Okay. Right? It, it is a unique social activity. Mm -hmm. I think it's different than throwing a football yes. or playing shuffleboard or hitting the tennis ball because... And in tennis, eventually, the idea is I want you to miss. Here, I don't want you to miss. I want to deliver something I had to you faster than I could walk it over to you. It's cooperative. Yeah. And it's kind of about getting in sync on a thing, but it's also kind of a metaphor, I think, for conversation. I think there's a reason that dads and sons, dads and daughters, moms and daughters even, and friends... We'll just, without thinking about it, go out and just pick up a ball and start throwing it back and forth like this while you shoot the breeze. Yep. Because it's kind of how conversation is. Oh, you're saying throw the ball back and forth. That kind yeah. of thing. Huh. Yeah. Feels right. I miss doing this with my dad. We don't do it much anymore. It's been a while. Yeah, I haven't thrown it with my dad in a while either. You used to, though, when you were a kid? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, dad was always assistant coach. Yeah? Which is the way, I mean, that's the way to coach. <laughs> well... Yeah, you're not wrong. if you're wrong. assistant coach, you don't have to deal with the parents. Uh-huh. You just get to play ball with the kids. Yeah, you're not wrong. So what was it like throwing with your dad? I mean, talk about the world, or just were you trying to get better at baseball when you played catch? Mostly baseball. Yeah? Um, he'd teach me all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, teach me how not to be scared of it. I'd throw you a grounder like this. We're in a forest. Yeah. Have to do the alligator. Uh, the thing that we always would focus on is perfection. Maybe not perfection, but... Uh, nice scoop. Like, the goal is for you not to move at all. And for it to hit you right in the it's chest. Nice shot. You throw it well. Like, really, you got a good release. You look good. So that was uh, the way he taught me how to throw was... Yeah, I threw that one low. But the, the goal is to never make that person move. And so we had a game where we would keep our feet like this. Okay, I'm doing it. Oh, uh, you could have, you'd have had to take a walk if you didn't move for that one. <laughs> Whatever. All right, I got to hit that. You got to hit that. It's pretty good. That was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, not quite hitting it. Yeah, I miss that stuff. I used to stay up real late with my dad. We'd talk about things at night. We'd go out in the yard and play catch during the day. <laughs> dad was a busy guy. I mean, he had a lot of responsibilities, but he was a sucker for me walking into his office with two gloves, but like, dad could throw it around for a minute. And pretty much always he ditches stuff. That was the Trump card. Yeah. Right there on the spot. Your kid wants to play catch with you. You say yes, right? Yeah. I hope my huh. son remembers that the same way. Interesting. Yeah. I uh, need to keep saying yes. So he keeps asking. My son, they, well, my bad. Whoa, that was a disaster. Sorry, I kept it out of my crotch. That was my the whole son. Goal. They they called him up to the mound this year, which is really cool because, oh, that was weird. That moved up and down, knuckleball. So my son uh, started the 
the season in right field, and then he was just consistent. And they eventually let him pitch, like not as a position pitcher. They actually put him in as pitcher a couple times. And then yeah. a couple times he just they needed an extra few throws, and they put him in there. But uh, he worked his way all the way, all the way up. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so we went and uh, sat up late one night, got some lights, and started started throwing on. You know, they'll sit on the bucket, hit me in the glove kind of thing. Pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And I don't know why I don't feel it over basketball or tennis or football. I mean, I like all the sports. I play all the sports. But only baseball feels like father-son magic. Like, uh, Like it breaks down whatever little invisible masculine conversational hurdle might exist. And all of a sudden... Maybe just how you throw it back and forth is part of the conversation. I don't know. I might be stretching. Well, do you want me? I mean, sounds like you kind of want that conversation right now. Do you want me to? Are are you getting some hair in places you weren't really expecting hair, son? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I could make you uncomfortable by talking about masculine friendship. <laughs> Here's a bizarre knuckleball to mess with your sense of reality. You can throw heat. Throw heat. Let me see what you got. That was a knuckleball, too. It was. Okay. So I did this. One second. One second. I I dropped my glass. I will not throw hard without telling you what's coming. Okay. This is just a straight four seam standard issue ball. Yeah, that's pretty quick. No. So my problem is, is this heat? Oh, there it Whoa. is. <laughs> I tried to make it cut a little bit, and uh, all I cut was dirt. Did I ever tell you about uh, my dad's uncle, Uncle Pod? Uncle Pod couldn't talk really well. Okay. If you would... <laughs> this is a great story. got to get my dad to tell this story. But uh, Uncle Pod... <laughs> that was a disaster. <laughs> my bad. So basically... He would say, come on, come on, hit it with it hard. You know, he, he was, the way he talked, he was like, had a speech impediment. Okay. And he, he would tell you, my bad. Sorry. He would tell you to hit a bitter weed cutter. Hit me a bitter weed cutter. Bitter weed cutter. What does that mean? A bitter weed cutter. So if it's really low like this. Oh, that hit a log. It did. But, or a worm burner. There's the same oh, thing. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, worm burner. Worm bitter burner. weed cutter. And, uh. <laughs> We got to go ask my dad because they were playing out in the country after church one day or something like that, and like the community would get out there, <laughs> and they, they Uncle Uncle Pod played played third base. I imagine this to be like back in the '60s or whatever. And they said that a crazy fast one got hit to third base. You know that's where you get the the heaters. Right? Oh yeah, hot corner. Hit him real hard. Pshoo, here it comes boom, and right before it got to him, it hit a little clod of dirt or a probably a you know a little cow patty or something and it popped up and i hit uncle pod in the throat and he dropped his glove he just threw his glove down and then he just ran off the field and he went to the concession stand and he got a coke and he started gulping it <laughs> and they're like what are you doing uncle pod he goes i got hit in the doozle i gotta get me a dank before my doozle swole up <laughs> <laughs> he got hit in the goozle. He said, I got hit in the goozle. I got to get me a dink before my doozle swore up. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was hoping the punchline of the story would be it knocked the speech impediment right out of him. Or back into him. Yeah, kind of yeah, like, kinda like clear. rookie of the year or something. He had a British accent. Yeah. yeah. No, that was not the case. But uh, <laughs> I have to get dad to tell that story. That's pretty good. But we always talk about getting hit in the doozle. <laughs> You want to try to get to 100? What are we getting to 100 at? One. <laughs> two. Three. You want to go quick hands? Four. No. Five. Oh! What? Six. Good thing that's a 14 Seven. inch glove you got there. Eight. It is a 14. What is that? Uh, riveting radio? <laughs> no, it's not. That's what it is? 15. 16. <laughs> 17. What happened there? 18. You see me drop it and recover it 19, in the process of throwing? 20. I mean, the throw is there. 21. 
It we're, just didn't we're go well. on the right side of the of the body now. I'm starting to sweat. Nice. That means it's working. Every once in a while when I do this with the kids, I do this. I just oh. make one that's a little harder. Ah. Fortunately, fortunately I came prepared. Oh, what the heck is that? What kind of junk was that? You said you were trying to make over. it harder for a second. What are we at? 99? Like that. I think that's like 75. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh gosh. Yeah, oh, um, we... you ever see that uh, you ever see that little meme or whatever? It's been floating around for a while. Shows a bunch of kids with their ball gloves and everything. And it says, uh, one day in your childhood, you went out to play with all your friends and it was the last time and nobody knew. Yeah, it sucks. You seen that one? Yeah. It sucks? You think? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Doing what? Why are you making this sad? Why is that sad? I don't know. You're only kids for so long. I guess this is what I'm, okay. Well, first of all, I think that meme is true. Yeah. Obviously there was a last time. You're just not thinking that way when you're a kid about the whole crew, the whole gang and everything. So <laughs> that said, I guess what I never understood about that is why we stopped, right? Should we go play kickball? No, I don't want to play kickball with you. So that gets back to the first question. You asked me when the last time I did it was. Yeah, that's it. I see what we're doing here. <laughs> I see what's going on. It's because of responsibility. How do you mean? You gotta, you gotta go feed people that need you to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> well, first you have to go make them. <laughs> what is it? Uh, I don't know. It's it just feels like it kind of gets time to, uh, to not play anymore. Yeah. Like you got to quit playing and you got to go accomplish something. And that's good. I like accomplishing things, but I guess I kind of feel like we were accomplishing things when we went out and played catch, played ball in the neighbor's yard or whatever. I think that was fruitful. I don't think that was just frivolous rehearsing for something that would matter later on. I think that all, all of that play mattered then. I think how we treated each other then mattered then. And so, yeah, did you have that kid in your neighborhood that was like, they weren't super fun to play with, but you invited them anyway? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Or the uh, literally everybody else is busy, but well, that kid's available. Yeah. That kid? Yeah. Yeah, that kid. Yeah. I think I might have been that kid. I might have been that kid too. <laughs> <laughs> totally get it. I guess is what I'm driving at. It, it makes me sad that... This sometimes I think of play as a thing that is the opposite of work or recovery from work and not accomplishing anything. Because I think we're accomplishing something right now. And I don't mm -hmm. care if I can't tell you exactly what it is. But I don't know. For whatever reason, for me, it's meaningful to hang out with my friends and not have anything electronic around us. And it's something as simple as what my dad and his friends did. His dad and his friends did. It's just being a part of something incredibly simple and that you can't do by yourself. Like playing catch is just kind of, um, it's sort of the anti, the anti digital in a way, you know? Yes. And play for the sake of play. Cause I don't know. Cause you got, you got a friend. It's a good thing to have a friend. It's a I good thing to have a dad good. and it's a good thing Sometimes to play. That friend has time. to get on an airplane and come to Alabama. <laughs> you came to me last time. It evens That's out. True. This episode of No Dumb Questions is sponsored by Raycon. Really good earbuds. They're, Absolutely. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the blue ones. That's, yeah. Those are the ones I, I wear. The blue what? ones sound a little different than those white ones? Uh, in my head. Okay. They, to me, they sound exactly the same as my white ones. Sounds sportier to me. I don't a know A little sport, a little quicker? I don't know what A little feel. faster? <laughs> <laughs> I had the, the blue ones on when I flew down here to hang out with you. And I had an awareness mode on when I got on the plane. I could hear all of the announcements and everything going on. Mm -hmm. and then I thought, you know, I didn't get much sleep last night. It's time for me to shut it down. So I put on a real boring talk show. Yeah. And I took off awareness mode and everything just went away. That's great. And those people talking about stocks and bonds and other things I don't understand, they just put me straight to sleep. And when I woke up, I was in Alabama. So 
True story. Yeah. I was on an airplane recently. Mm -hmm. Two guys behind me talking real loud. Okay. I looked at the guy right to me, uh, to my right. I was near the window. We were on the left side of the airplane. Looked at my right, and I was like, like, kind of like gave him a look like, are you hearing this? Can you believe they're talking like this? This guy starts talking about all kinds of stuff, about time he had in the Army, all this stuff. Starts talking about learning English and learning German in Germany. Basically, Germans who learn English and people from America who learn German while they're okay. in Germany. He's talking okay. about all this stuff. Sure. He's like, yeah, man, there's some Germans, you don't want them learning English. I was like, what? Huh? I was like, well, what does that even mean? He's like, yeah. Yeah, those people. And I was like, well, what? What is happening? Where am I? Where am I flying into? I was just, he was just singling out a people group and like saying, yeah, you don't want them to have this language. And I was like, what does this even mean? So we get ready to get off the plane. Uh, and me and the guy next to me, we both put in our earbuds. And we were like just trying to drown out what they were doing, which awareness mode off right on the earbuds. Got off the plane and I'm like, hey, dude, I don't know what that was. And he, I heard him talk and he, he had kind of a South African twang to his voice. I was like, are you South African? He goes, no, no, I'm German. <laughs> 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 so the guys behind him were talking about Germans and he was German. He was just playing along really nice. Oh, I get it now. So yeah, it was it. interesting. What about his earbuds? Uh, were they high quality Raycon earbuds or were they a lesser brand? I think they were a lesser brand. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. He was traveling far from home. It, he probably he, had to buy something that's cut rate, but still very expensive from some airport store where they overcharge when he could have just gone to buy Raycon.com slash NDQ. Is that what you're thinking? NDQ, that's the one. Yeah. 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 What's NDQ the stand for again? Well, it's the name of this program. No, oh, no, no questions. questions. Yeah. yeah. A couple of things that I think we both like about Raycons. One is that you get the gel tips, so they super fit in your ears, and they're not going anywhere. That is a total dad thing to say, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's not going yeah. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I did that. But that's the thing, ratchet straps and Raycon gel tips that's not going anywhere. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know it's true. Yep. I say it every time I do that. And then uh, we talked about the batteries, but eight hours for the... The Raycons themselves, 32 hours of battery life that you get from the pill. And the deal is awesome this time around. Uh, pay attention to this one because it's 20% off. Mm -hmm. Now, as we're recording this, you know, school's ramping up and everything. It and was 15, people are right? Gearing up. It was 15, yeah. Right now it's 20, which is, that's a, that's a more percent than the other percent. <laughs> Even before the more percentages, Raycons are super affordable. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium brands. But school is getting back in session right now as we're recording this, which means that Raycon is doing an annual back-to-school sale. And so for a limited time only, you can go to buyraycon.com slash NDQ today and get 20% off site-wide plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash NDQ to get 20% off. Buyraycon.com slash NDQ. Super good deal on a super great product. For the record, I think we've done quite a bit here. I wonder if we're getting close to 100. We haven't dropped anything, have we? Oh, uh, we dropped a couple. Not since we started, like, counting. Right. Do you remember that time we went to the beach and we started playing paddleboard? Or what was that called? The Yeah, I actually had a surgery after that and lost a testicle, so I remember it vividly. <laughs> no, you didn't. But I did hit <laughs> no, you. No, really I didn't, hard but I could have. You hit me really hard. <laughs> but that was the first time we had done something like that. And do you remember I well, let me put it this way. I remember your face. Because I remember your face because it said, Oh, you're not supposed to have these skills, but you do. Oh yeah, because you were competent? No, yeah, I just remember, I remember your face. You're like, oh, you're used to throwing with people that can't throw back. You're used to hitting a paddle with people that can't hit back. And I'm just, I remembered that. <laughs> um, I remember thinking, I'm I've, glad seen, I've seen my son and his buddies. Like, he's got a buddy. I went to camp with him recently. And I remember him discovering that the other kid was good at stuff. And then they just kind of gravitated to each other and like, oh, I can play ball with this kid, literally. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing that and being like, oh, that's fun. The moment that I realized that you were uh, athletically competent? Is it a word? Yeah, whatever. Just, I could catch. Well, yeah. And throw it back. <laughs> yeah, and really, I, I mean, we sat out there on the beach and just tried to see how many times we could keep that paddle ball in the air. 
It was a lot. You bailed us out there. I got yeah, dangerously close. close to the dirt. Yeah, I didn't catch it. I caught it right in the palm, though. I, well, I'm not proud of that. Man, I wonder what number we're at. Third chair knows. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> we haven't dropped any. We'll, we'll make sure to spell it out when one hits the dirt. Yep. So they can let us know when we failed. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know what it is, like the dad thing or state of the world or what, but I have been enjoying simple things like this a lot more the last I, I don't, couple of years. I don't keep up with politics much anymore. I, I'm working on a fence at home. Same. I'm going to. I'm going to keep a goat in there. <laughs> That's kind of the opposite of politics, dude. <laughs> so, like, I just want a goat that can be like, hey, goat, you want to eat this? Goats eat cans, <laughs> according to cartoons, right? And gloves. Yeah. Gloves are their favorite food. Yeah. That's so, what I learned in cartoons. I mean, my thought is, I don't know, I just, the less I, I get on the internet and the less I read social media mm -hmm. the happier i become are you doing that less yeah i am why uh i think i'm doing that less because i realized there's not like a single tweet i'm going to read or post or whatever they call it these days it's like i'm waiting for the one thing to read they're like oh cool well that was it that's the one i was yeah. looking for I guess I don't have to read social media anymore because I finally satisfied that internal thirst for whatever it is I'm looking for. That's not going to happen. Uh-uh. No, it's not there. Ever. Why did, how did that occur to you? I don't know. I mean, I've had this thought many times, and I was posting a lot, too. I just don't post as much anymore in terms of tweets or... I don't know. It, when I do, I try to make it constructive. All right, here we go. Ten throws, real, real tight. One, two. Three. Ooh, I got blinded there for a sec. What's that? I just got the wrong backdrop for the ball for one I know, second. Right? It took me a minute to pick it back up. Seven. I did that a minute ago too. If you get a bright leaf behind it, the contrast isn't there. Here's the last one, and there's a lobber for ten. Oh, that's okay. that nice. Way to call for the uh, vigorous interlude. <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know i uh i just don't think i want to uh spend as much time on social media but i do want to spend more time doing things with my hands i like tractors i like turning wrenches i like making things yeah well you used to make things a lot now you make things even more learn more tools and stuff to do that. That's a direct threat to your social media time. It is. Yeah. I think getting uh, the social media time down to toilet time only is Ooh. about perfect. Toilet time. That's plenty. Only. Wow. I must admit, I, uh, I read stuff in the shower too. Be interesting. Yeah. My phone's water. Oh, Oh, wow. I didn't think it was as short as you thought it was. Yeah, I, the, I, mean, you I don't know. I, I kind of messed that one up. I'm going to give you a real safe one. <laughs> that was safe. Thanks. That's the safest throw of my life. <laughs> that was safe like a sitcom dad throwing toward the camera, knowing no one is going to be on the other side to catch it. Yeah. And having to look super gentle with his eyebrows up in the middle. <laughs> there you go, Junior. Great job. Your mom and I are so proud of you. <laughs> but there are some tough lessons we have to learn today about integrity. Isn't that right, champ? <laughs> it was that kind of throw. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think the schedule for middle of life assessment stuff kind of works the way it used to. But I more feel like I'm in the middle of the part of my life that is going to be involved with technology and the internet deeply and I'm definitely assessing how much of my time I want to go there my brother died years ago now 
I mean, I was uh, 20, early 20s when he died. And we played games together. We spent a lot of our time together doing stuff like this, you know, wrestling around, sports, whatnot. We played video games and we liked role play games like uh, Final Fantasy, stuff like that. Or you make a team of characters and you go fight the goblins and whatever. And I still have all these save files from back then. You still do? Yeah, I still have them. Yeah. I on what? On the original cartridges. NES? Uh, SNES and PlayStation and like the first one. Really? Kind of memory cards and everything still. And I've pulled them back out. And Recently? there we are, right where we left it, right where he and I left it just before, just before the accident. And it's cool to be like, hey, you know, this is the last thing that my brother saw in this fake imaginary world with me when we were playing this together. And of course, there's always two characters, one's named Matt, one's named Mark. So there we are all decked out with the weapons and armor and helmets and everything else that we both thought would be the right one for each of us to be wearing in that scenario. And so our decisions are still there, enshrined in ones and zeros, and our unpacking of a journey, a story, a quest together is still there, enshrined in ones and zeros. I haven't finished it. I haven't touched the, the main character or moved around at all. I'm just leaving it right there. Are there two characters? Like, What game are we talking about? Uh, this would be Final Fantasy 3 was the one we were playing at that point. So there are, I don't know, 20 characters, but you make a little party out of the four you like the best. I don't know. It's just Have a... you taken a picture of it? Huh. No? You know, I suppose I haven't. I think those were on a battery backup. I probably should snap a picture of that. But the point is, it's cool that there's some ones and zeros left behind by him. That's cool. But it's not anywhere close to what I cherish the most. And in the end, when I look at those, I feel a little bit of connectedness with him, but I feel like, huh, it'd be a pity if your whole legacy was this. Save files, ones, zeros, things with file extension names. What do you mean? I mean, I want a smaller percentage of whatever I leave behind someday to be save files. And I want a bigger sense or a bigger percentage to be tangible a bigger percentage to be things we built, ball gloves that we broke in, baseballs we scuffed up. It's all gonna burn though. It's all gonna burn, sure, sure. So is that, is that your attitude on it? No, Either I mean, way? what I mean by that is the, the things that do last are relationships. A little risky throwing uh, knuckleballs this deep into the, we haven't dropped it streak we got going on. <laughs> you dog. You know what? What if I just throw it past you a little oh, bit? Oh, crap. Make you oh, a little Willie Mays action there. There you go. Okay. Don't you dare. Dude, don't you dare. You know what I just did for us? Do you I, know what I just did for I us? I do, yeah. I mean, that was a full retreat from you with my back to you just so you could make a point. My knuckleball was to you. That was an act of aggression. <laughs> and now you're going to get an act of aggression and you're not going to like it. it. Yeah. No, you're not. You're going to get another sitcom dad throw. What were we saying about stuff burning? Well, <laughs> like I think, our streak? Uh, I think it's all going to burn, and I think the uh, relationship stuff is actually going to last. My opinion. Uh, I don't know that the save file is just a one or zero left behind. That was a little time that you and Mark had together. Yeah. That was super fun. So I, I think it lasts beyond the... We, uh, we moved into a house one time, somebody that had died, okay. and their family member was cleaning up, and they had some stuff there they were trying to figure out what to do with. It was like an old dog's collar, right? Okay. So this individual's dog had died, and the family was coming in, and they were like, man, this is overwhelming. Like, what do you do with this? It's a dog collar of like this really good dog this person had. And the person was keeping the collar to remember the dog. The person had died. And now the memory of that dog only existed in the family member's mind. Right. Once they thought, threw the dog collar away, it's gone, right? Right. Except in memory. Right. So what do you do? Do you throw the dog collar away? Yeah. You do. Yeah, it was low. I'm sorry. No, you don't need to apologize. <laughs> just, so, just wanted to show you that I'm committed and I'm making the effort. I guess my point is, we're yeah, I got to bring that up. I don't know what's going No, you do. No, on. you're fine. So I guess the point is, like, my calculus notebooks from college. Right. In the house there. 
I don't know. It's cool to look back at my my mom's elementary school crayon drawings, which we have some of. But like, I don't know. Yeah, I think some of is kind of the key there, right? Yeah. I've got a lot more save files from my brother from school or projects or whatever. I'm not going through all of those. Just, you know, that save file is particularly special. That had a little bend to it. Did you put a little twisty twist I on that I didn't know. That was weird. It got lucky. You, okay. Maybe it was an optical collision. I still have some of his clothes. Do you wear them? No. No. Too weird? No. It's just, I don't know. I don't even really think of them as being the kind of thing I would wear. It just doesn't cross my mind. It's not you know why the I ultimate have thing to do with heirlooms like that? What's that? Pass them on to somebody else and say, these are really important. And Mark would have wanted you to have this. Oh. That way now they have to deal oh, with it. Oh, forever. <laughs> he would have wanted that. Do you know how I know? Because I just said it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is it your brother who died? Then hold on to this shirt. <laughs> Monster. <laughs> yeah. What do you say when somebody tells, hey, this is, uh, this is your Aunt Bessie's. Okay. This was her favorite piano bench. We just knew you'd want it. It. It'll go well with all your Ikea furniture. <laughs> you got me pegged. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, that's why I say it's all going to burn. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. It's been fun trying to think about how to... And you say relationship is what you get to keep. I agree. So, in this mortal, physical world, what can you do to preserve that without crossing the lines of, like, being weird and creepy and having your legacy dictate terms to people in the future out of some misguided sense of guilt and grief. And I, I've been thinking about that stuff that I've been doing. I told you about the skipping rock bucket, right? Nope. Really? Nope. Oh, I made a skipping rock bucket. Okay. Yeah. I was skipping rocks a few years ago, found some really good ones. I threw them out into the lake. I thought, well, now that's over and it's spent. And I already know how to skip rocks fairly well. What if I started saving some of these good ones that I find, or if I find one when I'm not near water, save it. So I got a bunch of them in my garage. There's a bucket. It's a skipping rock bucket. And they're from all over the world, just great rocks that need to be skipped someday. In the skipping rock bucket goes a USB drive with a little letter. And the bucket is labeled, do not throw away ever. And it's just clearly marked, give this to the first generation of kids after I'm gone. What is it? It's just a video, me saying, maybe we met, maybe we didn't. Either way, I think skipping rocks is really fun. I knew someday there would be a you. So over the course of my life, I've collected these good skipping rocks from all around the world. There's plenty. So you can keep trying. Doesn't matter if they don't all skip. Here's how you do it. This is my favorite set of techniques. If you That's do it fine. like this, you get this. If you do it like this, you get this. And I hope you have fun skipping rocks. That's it. No big sappy, sad speech or anything. I just want to teach one generation of my descendants something that isn't handed down indirectly, but directly from me to you, I taught you one thing. How to skip rocks. And Interesting. I thought of you in advance because <clears throat> I had to get the rocks in advance. And someday, Tell me more about the sappy thing you don't want to say in that message. What do you mean? You said not some sappy whatever message. Well, tell me more about that sappy message that you don't want it to be. I mean, I kind of hinted at it a minute ago. When I'm gone, I don't want that to be one of those patriarch legacies where it's like, dad never would have wanted us to do this or always wanted us to do that out of misguided obligation to dad's memory. We have to do these things that don't really make sense given how the world is now. I don't want that. I don't want to heap stuff on them. Yeah, so I don't want to do a whole thing about how all the things ought to be. I hope the stuff that I believe and what I tried to hand down, I hope that stuff goes through my kids to future generations. I hope that what comes from me directly is just uh, the rock skipping. Maybe a couple other lessons too when I think of them, but for now that's what I've been thinking of. Because the video I made no, okay. <laughs> is on a DVD in the safety deposit box. Well, who's that video for? For my family. Who know you? Uh, there's also a video in there that's for people that don't know me. 
Really? Yeah. Made it in 2012. Okay. Which was a hard year. Why? Because I was going to Africa and I thought there was a good chance I could die. Why were, why were you, what? Lots of people go to Africa and don't, I don't know. die at all, man. I don't know. They, every, single, every single African who is there right now and alive didn't die in Africa. This was a hard trek. I, I, I did some, some travel over land and places I w I'd never been. You know, I was like, ah, I don't know. Okay, you're feeling stuff. All right, I get it. I was feeling it. So I, uh, I made a video. I need to go revisit that. But yeah, I made a video talking about talking about how I think things are and how I was feeling things. I don't know. I need to go watch it. I don't even remember what's on it. You're not going to replace it, are you? I might. Really? Maybe. Why not just add to it? Just make a new one. Yeah, I could add to it, but people change. Right, but that was still you. And that's a cross-section of what you were lined up with that moment in history. Yeah. And if we give past versions of ourselves and people from the past the benefit of the doubt, we assume they were trying to do things that made sense, given how their world was in that moment. And so it might be a little cringy at moments because the world has changed. And now things you said that were clever or original look played out and tired here or there. But it's still a nice sample of who you were and where it was at. And that could be really encouraging to future generations when they are that age or they are in a moment in history that kind of rhymes with 2012, you know? Yeah. But adding to it just gives them another sample from another part of yeah. your process. Now, I, I, wouldn't, have to watch it. I wouldn't swap it. I have to watch it. I don't know. I guess there are certain things that I suppose a person could say in a video where I'd recommend you swap it. I'm just guessing you didn't. <laughs> I've also got a video game cartridge preloaded with the worst weapons build out I could imagine to make things harder for the next generation. That's a joke. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, I was like, dude, I really like this idea. <laughs> no, that's interesting. You should go play that game sometime. Yeah, maybe just finish it out, huh? Or how many do you have? How many games do you have? I have two that we distinctively invested in. We got an original version of Chrono Trigger and we got Final Fantasy 3. Those were the two we that were in the rotation when he Maybe died. Maybe you told me about the Chrono Trigger one. Maybe I did. Huh. I wonder if there's a way to clone that game. I don't know. Like, you put the cartridge in and you you make a, an image of that. I mean, there are multiple save slots. I could probably just keep playing and save it to another save file. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. I don't know, dude. It's just playing catch. It's just throwing a ball back and forth. But... Every time I ever have the chance to do this with friends, people I care about, uh, seems like your head goes to a different place than other circumstances for conversation. And I'm grateful. When I really like people, I play catch with them. Yeah. Igualmente. I feel the same way. Sweet. We're, uh, I don't think we're ever going to drop one. Yeah, that's a thing. I can do this all day. Uh, I could too. Dead gummit. That's a ground ball. It doesn't count. It's got to be a legit drop there. Dead gummit, you dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a problem because we weren't going to do it, were we? No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't going to drop that. No, it's official. We're done. That ball hit the ground. All right. Let me find my glasses. I did a thing. Oh, great. I just laid them right here in the poison ivy. <laughs> you just put those on your eyes. It's going to be wonderful. The bridge of your nose. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, brother. Likewise, man. Yeah. We played catch. That was great. Mm -hmm. Thank you.